Pokemon Emerald, but this time I'm doing a Psychic type only challenge. The rules are quite simple, only Psychic type Pokemon, except for an HM slave maybe, but I'm not allowed to use it in battle. Alright, let's go. At first I decided to cheat Beldum in, because it will become one of the coolest Psychic type Pokemon, but until this point, it won't be that strong because its only move is takedown which damages also the user, so that makes the challenge a little bit more difficult, at least after the first Brennan fight. You want to show me how to catch Pokemon? Yeah, who cares. Then I decided to catch the first new team member. Not only for backup, but also because Rawls will become a weapon in its final evolution. In Paddleberg Woods, I had the first encounter with Team Aqua, whose Pugiana was not a problem either. But things started to become more serious as soon as I tried the first gym battle against Roxanne. I just went in to look how far I could go, but I wasn't able to beat her first Geodude without taking too much damage, so my Rawls died against her second one short after. I needed a better idea, since I need rolls in order to have at least a neutral attack against Roxanne's rock types and Beldam still only has takedown, so I had no chance except of leveling up my future powerhouse. But while training, I had an interesting encounter with a new team member I totally forgot about, but this Abra may only solve future problems. After grinding, I started the second attempt for the first gym badge. My rolls was now strong enough to take out the first Geodude with two confusions. Luckily for me, the confusions were strong enough to also take out the second Geodude. But the real boss fight began with Nose Pass. I didn't have any idea of how to defeat this thing easily, so I stayed with my strategy, spam confusion and hope for RNG to be on my side. And what can I say? It worked. After the second encounter with Team Aqua, I went south again to the next gym. But at first, I had to fight Brandon again. I decided to begin with Beldum, but his Slugma did way too much damage with Ember. I didn't want to, but I switched to Rawls and one-shotted the Fire Snail. His Mudkip was next, and the Confusion only took a third of his health, while it hit way harder and managed to take out my current MVP. With speed on its side, Beldam also wasn't a big threat, and Abra… yeah, it couldn't teleport an AR-15 to its hand, so it also died. At first I wanted to move on, because this is an optional fight and I had no motivation in training to beat him eventually, but then I wanted revenge, so I tried it again. After two confusions, the Slugma was history, but since Rawls got yawned, I decided to switch it for Beldam, which turned out to be the right way, because I could get rid of as much HP as I could deal until Beldam dies to then finish it off with Rawls. Next I traveled to Dewford Town, gave the letter to Steven and wasted no time to get into the gym. Because it was a fighting type gym, I wasn't afraid of it at all, and my Rawls obliterated the whole team of Brawly. Next I traveled to Slatepot City and visited the Oceanic Museum to continue the story with the bad guys. Normally they aren't a big challenge, but they often use Dark type Pokemon, so my preferred type in this run doesn't work against them. Beldam had to face them all alone. It all ended up in his great sacrifice to kill the last fish. On my way to the next Brenner fight, my Rolls finally evolved. The Lombre was victim of spamming takedown. The Slugma was not a problem for my Kadabra but March Tom didn't want to get destroyed so easily, so it took out Kadabra first, just for Curlia to finish the job. Finally, I arrived at Marvel City, where Wally wanted to challenge me. After punching his own Rawls out of this galaxy, my Beldam finally evolved into Metang. Next, it was time to challenge Watson for the third gym badge. And I don't know how long it took, but this Magneton destroyed me so many times without even letting me see the last Pokemon Minectric. But after some time of grinding, I finally could see the light at the end of the tunnel. But it turned out that light was just a shockwave of Manectric. But after some more training and a few attempts later, RNG was on my side and Kadabra became, with a crit Psybeam, the MVP of the day. For the next step of my journey, I traveled through Fall Arbor Town, did the Meteor Falls fights, and finally went to the top of Mount Chimney to challenge Team Magma boss Maxi. His first Pokemon was a Mightyena. My psychic moves didn't work, so I had to spend Metal Claw to take it down. The next Pokemon was a Camerup, but Kadabra got destroyed by a Magnitude. Realizing this guy was quite a danger, I used Curlia's new move Psychic to two-shot this beast. His last Pokemon Zubat was pretty much a joke after this Camerup, so I defeated the Magma boss. After this, I took the opportunity to catch the new team member Spoink, before going into the fourth gym to challenge Flannery. I first planned to one-shot the new with Psychic, but I absolutely underestimated 
the attack overheat, which nearly killed my first Pokemon already. But another confusion was enough. With Slugma, I wanted to use the same tactic, but I made the same mistake again, and my Curlia finally fainted. I decided to go with Kadabra next because of its B2 safely take out Slugma. Next was another Kamer up. I surely didn't want to eat an overheat of this guy, so I didn't switch and just dealt the most damage I could do with Kadabra. But I totally underestimated Kadabra and it actually survived, so I could deal some more damage until it fainted. With only Metang left, I decided to go with Metal Claw to take the step bonus and managed to defeat the Kamerup. But at this moment I already lost, because the strongest Pokemon Torkoal was still a big threat and one shot at my last Pokemon. Time for grinding, I guess. I evolved Curlia finally into the powerhouse Gardevoir. In the next try, I started with Kadabra, took out the Numel and the Slugma. It was strong enough to have some HP left to damage the Kamerupt until my new Gardevoir Psychic it back to its Pokeball. I stayed in to see how much damage a Psychic would deal to the turtle, and it was decent. It survived, used the track, but RNG was on my side again, and one more Psychic was more than enough. So the fourth gym badge is mine. After the battle, I visited the desert to catch a new team member, Baltoy. And then it already was time for the fifth gym against my dad. And yeah, what can I say? Slacking, too strong. Then I thought my old strategy was way overused, so I went for the dirtiest of the dirty strategies. For some reason, I didn't realize that Gardevoir knew Double Team and Calm Mind. With these two attacks, I one-shotted his Spinda and Vigoroth. And now, the moment of truth. Can I one-shot a Slacking? This Gardevoir is a weapon. After that, only his Linoon remained, but come on. After the fifth gym, it was time to explore new areas, so I decided to travel north to Fort Tree City. But I stopped at the Weather Institute to fight against Team Aqua Admin Shelly with her Dark Type Pokemon. But since my Metang knows strength now, that fight wasn't really a problem. But shortly after crossing the bridge next to the Institute, the next rival battle awaits. His Lombra and Slugma weren't a problem for my new Grumpig and its Psybeam. His Marshtomp also was just a victim of my Gardevoir, so that fight was pretty easy. After arriving at Fortree City, I visited the gym to challenge its leader Winona. I decided to not mess around and set up my strategy with Gardevoir against the first Pokemon Swablu. After setting up, I destroyed this bird and also the Pelipa short after. I was a little bit afraid of her Skarmory and Altaria, but I underestimated my crew once again. So without any problem, I got my 6th gym badge. After that fight, I even got rewarded with the evolution from Baltoy into Claydol. I wasted no time and traveled short after to Lily Cove City. And after healing, I climbed up Mount Pyre and met Archie. After that, I went back to Lily Cove City and its shopping mall to do the last fight against my rival. But what can I say? Gardevoir swiped through his entire team with ease. Maybe I shouldn't have used this Pokemon. My next stop was a secret magma hideout inside the Fieri Path to find Magma Boss Maxi, who seems to be colorblind. He heard that and wanted to fight me. I forgot to change Pokemon, but after the heroic sacrifice of Kadabra, Metang could kill the dog. I didn't want to risk anything with his camera up, so I went with Gardevoir to make sure nothing goes wrong. And his Crobat? Yeah, weakness to psychic type, so no problem. Back to Slate Pot City. It seemed like Team Aqua stole a submarine, so I guess it's time for the next hideout. Fuck these puzzles. But since I was in the right region, I took the opportunity to catch a Staryu before traveling east to Mars Deep City to challenge the most difficult gym in the run, the Psychic Type Gym. And I have to say, Tate and Lisa were really hard to beat. They started with Claydol and Xadu, as I sent in Gardevoir and Kadabra. But the Calm Mining Xadu was way too strong and clapped my butt very hard. I don't know how many times I lost against them, but after some time I figured out a new plan. Kadabra has to use Reflect in the first turn to weaken the Earthquake of Claydol. Gardevoir has to set up during that time. I expected for Xadu only going for Calm Mind, so the only attack move was from Claydol. I taught my Gardevoir Shadow Ball and hoped that it could sweep through. Kadabra fainted and Claydol came in to Hyper Beam the life out of his relative. It hit itself and died. Next was Solar Rock. But since Gardevoir was completely boosted now, the sun went back to the Pokeball in no time. After that, I made sure the calm minded Xadu won't become a threat and Shadow Ball it in its face. The final Lunar Tone wasn't really dangerous at all. After a long time, I finally could beat this 7th gym. Next was yet another double battle against two Magma Admins at the Space Center. Together with Steven, we sent out the Metang crew and absolutely melted the enemy Pokemon. Because I could use Dive now, I was able to evolve my Staryu into Starmie and also Metang into Metagross. With my new Pokemon, it was time for the last battle against the Arc Polito Archie, who started with a Mightyena, but a few strengths were enough. Crobat fell because of Psychic, and his Rapido couldn't survive for strength either. 
then I watched a cutscene, went over a quasar in the sky pillar, watched another cutscene and made it into the last gym. I wanted to use the same tactic as always, but Loftus didn't want to play the game with me. It used Attract and Sweet Kiss which confused me, and I forgot that Water Pulse never misses. I wanted to give up first, but I decided to look how far I could make it. And what can I say, I'm never going to underestimate my team ever again. Every Pokemon died pretty fast, except that Kingdra took a few hits, but the Confuse Ray Psychic combo was too powerful in the end. And there we are, we collected every batch. The last and most difficult challenge will be the Elite Four. And this is my final team. I taught everyone a few new moves to perform better against the first two members, which are Dark and Ghost, the two biggest threats obviously. Okay, let's start with Elite Four, Sydney. He started with a Mightyena, as I had no chance then to send in Metagross. For my advantage, it could learn the attack Brick Break, so super effective against Dark type. It one shot that Mightyena, the Shift Tree, and the Cag Turn. His Crawdon actually survived the Brick Break with red health, but it got locked into full restoring, so it was just a matter of time until it accepted its fate. Sydney's last Pokemon Absol got destroyed by one attack again. This whole fight actually wasn't that bad, but I was a few levels above him, so that's obviously the reason why it wasn't that difficult. Phoebe's next, the ghost type member who started with a Dusclops. My idea was to use Deflect to decrease the damage of Shadow Punch. Kadabra survived and also used Light Screen. After its heroic sacrifice, it was time for the MVP Gardevoir and its move Shadow Ball, which took half health. The Dusclops instead used Curse and killed itself. But because of the status, I decided to change to Grumpig because he wasn't really necessary at this point and just to cause some damage. One Psychic took the Bonnet's health to yellow, its Will-O-Wisp missed, so another Psychic was enough to kill it. Her other Bonnet was nothing special, so just the same way again. Next was a second Dust Clops. I stayed in and dealt as much damage as I could with Grumpig, until it fainted because of an Earthquake. Then my Gardevoir was hungry, but after a Shadow Ball, Dust Clops survived with a few HP. It fired its own Shadow Ball at me. Luckily for me, it had a berry so it wasn't in healing range anymore, so another Shadow Ball closed his eye. Sableye was the last Pokemon. At this point, we just shot Shadow Balls at each other, and in the end, my Gardevoir survived with 2 HP and finally killed the Ghost. I didn't want to waste time, healed everyone up and challenged the second last Elite 4 member Glacier. She threw her first Celio in, and I went for Metagross. I tried a Meteor Mash, but it survived with a yellow bar. In the next turn, she already used one of her full restores, as I went for a Psychic. It lost half of its bar and a Brick Break was enough to kill the seal. Next, she already sends in her strongest Pokemon, Wall Rain. I decided to go for a Brick Break and got half of its health, but in return, it made some damage with a Surf. Sadly, it also had a Berry, so I had to waste two more Brick Breaks to get rid of this thing. On her next Pokemon, Glalie, I also went for a simple Brick Break, as her Pokemon missed an Icy Wind. Since Metagross is faster, I could take it out with strength, same tactic with a second Glalie. The second Celio wasn't a threat at all, one Thunderbolt and a Psychic later, it was history, as well as the career of Glacier. The last Elite 4 member was Drake, but since I had a star me with Ice Beam, most of his team <laughs> was a complete joke. I one-shotted every single Pokemon of him except the Kingdra, but RNG had Mercy and it got frozen. And now it's time for the last challenge against the champ himself. Wallace started with a Waylord. I forgot to change and threw my Starmie in. I was afraid of a water spout, so I didn't change and use Surf, which did more damage than I expected. Then suddenly he changed to Ludicolo, but since my Starmie only had a few HP left, I decided to stay in and use Ice Beam instead. It did some decent damage, but Starmie couldn't survive a Giga Drain. I decided to throw Grumpig in and kill the Ludicolo with two Psychics. Next was Waylord again, and I took the opportunity to switch to Gardevoir, because it knows Thunderbolt, which the Whale couldn't survive. Next was Tentacruel, but due to the super effectiveness, two Psychics of Metagross were enough. The hardest enemy was definitely Whiskash. I decided myself for a Brick Break, which took nearly a fourth of its HP. The fish went for Amnesia and boosted its special defense. After repeating, Whiskash only had a few HP left, but Wallace used a full restore. So the same game again. Back in the red, the fish went for a super effective Earthquake, which dealt massive damage and then full restored again. Metagross couldn't handle a third round, so a Surf took it out. I decided to sacrifice Grumpig and to deal only a little bit of damage because of the Amnesia earlier. My HP were low as I changed my strategy and started to confuse it. It was down to the red again and hit itself, but Wallace went yet for another full restore. A second Earthquake killed my beautiful pig. My next Pokemon was Claydol that dealt with a Hyper Beam together with the Confusion a good amount of damage. 
but with Cash snapped out and used the same strat against me and Hyper Beam Claydor, which ate his berry after that. Another Hyper Beam was enough to finally send this unholy creature back into the abyss. My loading was next, but I misclicked and couldn't change to a different Pokemon, so Claydor paid the price. I felt it was time for my Gardevoir again, which attacked with a Thunderbolt. After eating its berry, the Milotic wasn't that lucky in the end, since it had to eat not only a berry but also a crit Thunderbolt, so it fainted. Wallace is down to his last Pokemon Gyarados, but since this little fella has a 4 times weakness to electric due to the water and flying type combination, I don't think I have to explain how this will end. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I became the champion of the Hoenn region by only using Psychic type Pokemon. Holy shit, 53 hours. So that was my first challenge in an older Pokemon game. It wasn't too difficult, but I am no competitive player. These games were just part of my childhood and I wanted to give it a try and do this just for the fun, even it took a very long time. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great time. Drop a like if you did, leave a nice comment, subscribe if you want to see more and never want to miss any new videos again. For that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Goodbye.